welcome back to Public Square. And when we ended the previous conversation, we were talking about fear. And Margaret, um, you wanted to, to elaborate. Part of the advantage of community-based programs, like Read West, like Reading Works, is that we are not housed in a fearful environment like a institution or a, a college. And I know Heather uh, from the New Mexico Coalition for Literacy can talk about all the community programs around the state. Uh, there are a number of us all working together toward the goal of bringing literacy to adults. What are we talking about in terms of our literacy levels in New Mexico? In New Mexico, it's 16% that are functioning below the basic level in prose literacy. And that's according to the National Assessment of Adult Literacy. Nationwide, um, every 10 years we do a study in literacy and um, some of the benchmarks change, but generally that's about one in six as well. I don't want to compare apples to oranges, but let's just say, you know, maybe uh, just, just under one in six people you encounter in your community have, you know, has, they struggle with literacy challenges. And are we talking about people who they dropped out or is it also people like they actually got a degree? Right, all of the above. Okay. Um, people with literacy, you know, who need to improve their skills come, in, come from all walks of li life, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all kinds of cultures. Really, um, it, it really doesn't discriminate. You know, it's, it's a skill and for whatever reason, these adults don't have that skill or they could improve on it. And what, what does this mean for the next generation of learners, if they have children? Well, what's very interesting, according to the recent assessment that came out in 2013, is that the skills of the younger adult population are actually less than the skills of, yeah, their, their older counterparts. We're going backwards? We're, we are, we're not making <laughs> measurable progress. In terms of capacity around the state, we're obviously in the biggest metro area. What about rural areas, small towns? There are literacy programs in rural communities or there are little nucleuses of people who are doing the work just as concerned citizens, but people don't know how to access those services. And so the first thought, like you did, is you go to a library. You might go to a library. So one of, one of the initiatives I, I took is, was to just outfit all of our local libraries with a services guide. That's, that's a resource guide. All the services in the state are listed there. So I wanted the staff of the libraries to have that. And if there wasn't a program, I included a letter just to encourage the community to start a program because we can fund that program, we can train the volunteers, we can train the community to form a board. We can help with resources like that. I'm happy to say that there is a literacy program in a lot of rural communities. Your comment on the fact that you yeah, have the libraries have little things, I wish they had something like that in, Col in Colorado because I went trying there and they had nothing that I could find. Really? Nothing at all. Wow. Go score New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to say that is actually a great thing to do. Yeah. We, we really, I, I have noticed that it's just the services, the good services that your organizations provide, all of you, are sometimes hidden. Hmm. And, and so I, one of my initiatives is aggressive outreach. We've got a lovely deal um, going with New Mexico broadcasters right now, and we're growing that, reaching out to UNM. But that's, scatter, that's still scattershot. Hmm. And, and really, it's, it's really have these community-based programs, like Margaret said, they know the community. They have their pulse. They've got networks. And, and still, word of mouth is still the number one. Catherine, I wanted to ask you about, uh, is it the Agua Fria Family Development Center? It's the Santa Fe Early Learning Campus ah, at okay. Agua Fria. <laughs> and you're taking yeah. sort of this dual generation approach from right. what it sounds like, multi-generation approach. We, we are, we are, and we're in the vision phase uh, right now of really building up the services. And the goal really is to, uh, as you were talking, surround these families uh, with a safe environment so that their very young children's needs can be met, but also so that their needs uh, can be met. We're, we're pattering ourselves after the CNM Connects 
um, in terms of a two-generation, dual-generation approach. And the most exciting thing and the really, really reason we're able to do this now is the development of this early learning campus where everything is right there, is convenient for uh, parents or grandparents or whomever comes together. Because really, you know, these families are um, just about at their max. And folks want to read to their babies. You know, our folks who can't read memorize the books, you know, and then, and so, so it's just, um, it's just the greatest time in the world to capture all of that, uh, that, you know, that's coming together in that way. But again, convenience, uh, convenience for these families is whew, yeah. big deal. Kathy, uh, she mentioned the CNM Connect program, and you know, CNM is sort of the center in this part of New Mexico for adult education, everything from literacy to GED to associate's degrees. So, you know, we've heard people talk about the fear and you might be this big scary institution <laughs> that people are afraid to go into. How do you meet adults where they are? It saddens me to think that uh, fear would keep people from coming because the reality is once you get past that, uh, what you find is a, a nice, very cushy place that cares about you no matter where you come from and no matter your skills when you walk in the door. We often talk uh, when we're out in the community about having multiple doors and we don't care which door you come through uh, because we just want you to come. The thing I, I want to say though is that uh, the CNM Connect model at CNM recognizes that this is a family issue. It is a wraparound service model that understands that a person's life is much more complex than I just want to take a class. And to understand that uh, these are fragile, fragile individuals with issues that can throw them into a tailspin very quickly. And what we want to do is wrap our arms around those people and say, how can we help? Can we help you get tires for your car? Can we help you get that pair of glasses that you broke? <laughs> can we help you uh, understand that learning to read is within your grasp and we can help you with that? Uh, so it is a wraparound service, but what it, what it comes from is the understanding that education is a family issue. It's, uh, and that a mother's education is the best indicator of whether a child is going to be successful or not. And if that is the case, and we know it is, how do we help make sure that those individuals are treated in a way that improves their education so that their entire family benefits from that? I think the most interesting thing is that we have this preconceived notion about what it means to not be literate, for example. And yet, many of the smartest people I know are people who struggle in, the capac in their capacity to read. But if you ask them a question about how to get to a certain place, they can describe that to you in a way that almost is magical. Well, I mean, when you said what people have to do to mm -hmm. pretend they know how to read, my god, the skill set you need to yeah, so, you're, so it, at the these college, are not unintelligent people. No. So at the college, what we want to do is to really create a sense that you are important and you have skills, and we want to, want to turn that into something important. You want to say, Dan? It requires a lot of memory to do, to be able to come up with something to, that's believable and to be able to give people directions easily. You have to be able to remember a lot of things. Can you, I and mean, those are things you can try and leverage into whatever Absolutely. we call a more formal education. Absolutely. Yeah. It helps me to remember stuff, like when you're trying to learn how to read, the sight words, be able to remember all the sight words. It's a great thing when you have a great memory. <laughs> the partnership aspect is how do we grow all of these things to connect? And I'm always learning new things and new people who are working on different things that we can connect with or that we can support with. Um, Reading Works doesn't have the capacity to go out door to door uh, and drop off flyers at people's door and talk to them, but we do. So what we're working on right now is uh, to increase the number of people in the International District who become the tutors at Reading Works so that they're actually helping out their neighbors. 
right? Because it's going to be people that want to live geographically close by, so that may help you understand different things that are going on with folks. Um, so we have started down that road of how do we get neighbors to help out neighbors, right? Because while it's an above average number of folks who haven't finished high school and maybe who are illiterate, uh, it doesn't mean there aren't strengths in the neighborhood. People who, who have finished high school, who have you know advanced degrees, or who may have just finished high school and want to help out somebody else. I wanted to ask uh, you know Heather and Kathy and Catherine. I mean, do you have a sense that our elected officials or our state government officials do they understand sort of what we're talking about here today? The nuances. I believe that the topic we're talking about is is an economic development topic. Mm -hmm. I think that our legislators are absolutely aware, uh, working very hard, um, but there's lots of competing issues that mm -hmm. they have to deal with, and I, I try really hard to uh, not be too judgmental because I'm not sitting in that seat, and I, I don't understand what it's like to sit there with all of those things coming at you all at once. Uh, can we do better? Absolutely. Do I hope we do better? Absolutely. Um, but I think that uh, it takes people like us uh, to really have these kinds of conversations in ways that make a difference to everybody. I will say uh, Representative Monica Youngblood was very interested in joining us and she has been working on these issues and we're in the middle of when, as we tape of interim committee season so she's super busy. <laughs> but um, unfortunately she could not join us. But she seems to be very interested. Um, Heather, I think you, you all have talked at the legislature and the adult literacy piece in particular. Right, they're all very much aware on both sides of the aisle, in both chambers of what we do, who we are. Yes, we support you. Absolutely, we will fund you. Uh, the difficulty is that our money does come from general f the general fund and oil and gas revenue is down. But we don't want to be solely dependent on the state. We want the community. We need the businesses. We need the individuals to support our work and come to the table. Uh, no, we don't get as much funding as any social service or educational institution at all. And our cost per student is very low at only $500. But the public funding, I have to say, though it can fluctuate, though administration of it can change and you have to roll with the punches, we need for the community to step up and support our work. I mean, I'm just curious if this comes up with employers as the impetus sometimes like, well, I can go find someone who can read or to reach out to. <clears throat> well, my experience with the business community is that they get the early childhood education story because of their inability to hire uh, folks who can read or have basic math skills and uh, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, they've been kind of early adapters in some ways. Are they willing, and though, to, like, send an employee who needs that help, too? I'm not, you know, I don't know. That's not, yeah. the, that's not the space that I operate in, so. I, I, I will say that what we experience at CNM is that people do come to us and ask us to help mm -hmm. in those situations, either individually or with groups. Um, so I, I think that in many situations, and I won't say most, but in many situations, when you have an employee that's a really great employee uh, that you see struggling, you're try, you try to reach out and get help for them. And that could be in literacy issues. It can also be in issues of childcare or other kinds of things. Hi, I wanted to add to the military comment. Um, one of them, the experiences we had in uh, Catholic Charities is that uh, we have many students, adult students that come into the program because they need, uh, you know, to get that certification. And many of the employers are willing to let them, uh, given the necessary time to come into the program. They'll give them the program. time while they pay. Given the time. Will they give and them even they pay. Will they pay them their salary while for they're some there? Some of them, they do pay for them. Okay. We have, um, uh, personally, I had this student, I remember her, and she was really afraid because uh, she had a really good employment in this, uh, well, like a um, laboratory where they do clinic studies on that. But one of the requir requirements to keep that uh, job was to get the diploma. But the employer was willing to let it come into the classes and they even pay for all that time that she was investing on that. So yeah, we have people there, really good people, really good employees. 
Did you want to say something, Lee? Yeah, I wanted to say that um, this year we had a little bit of scheduling problems with our classes and stuff, but they already got it okayed with their employer, and I said, all we can do is ask. Let's try. You know, encourage them to at least try, because if you don't ask, and it could have all worked out, we won't know unless we try. And the majority of everything was able to be worked out. I heard more success stories than anything as far as working with employers. They want them to, to learn English. They want them to get better literacy skills or whatever it might be. What about in terms of capacity as well, um, a number of tutors? I know you guys work on a volunteer, your tutors are volunteers. I mean, is it, if someone's watching this and they would be interested in that, how difficult is that? Through the New Mexico Coalition for Literacy, we provide several uh, trainings all during the year. Um, it's an 18-hour training. It usually starts with an uh, orientation, and then it's over two Saturdays. We'll do two full Saturdays of, of training, either on um, helping someone uh, improve their low literacy by reading and writing, or uh, English as a second language. Those are the two ways that, that we help them prepare. Um, after the students have uh, gotten uh, pretty good at, at uh, listening and, and communication in English, then we move them into uh, literacy and, and reading and writing so that they are available to those employers that need to hire uh, a good workforce, a ready workforce. And it's great because you do it one-to-one -one and uh, you can really affect change in someone's life and watch it right before your eyes and it usually uh, it will uh, it will uh, make you uh, change too or, or enrich your life also so Danny if someone's watching this and they might be in a place you were six months ago and are struggling to whether they should go get help what would you like them to know that the places are out there and just from Reed West, the staff I know there are great. They are amazing. And it's hard. It's a lot of work to do. But just the project I've made, the how far I've come since then, it's amazing. And it's a great feeling. And I know it's scary. It's terrifying. The only thing I can say to them is to go. Roberta, and I know, actually, Leah, you were also a late student. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you guys have thoughts for people who are on the fence about whether they think they belong somewhere to get their education? I mean, it changed my whole life. It changed every part of my life from just my personal growth. And, you know, I was born and raised in the South Valley, and I just sort of lived in a, in a box, and it just changed how I see the world. It changed how I raise my children. It changed my relationship with my husband. It's just been such a wonderful blessing to have the education in my, in my life. So I would encourage anybody that's just on the fence about going back. Um, you know, c and is a great resource. They have small classes. The faculty is there to help you. The tutoring is great. I mean, I lived at the tutoring center for a year, you know, throughout my whole time there. And it just, it's, it's there's so many people there to help you and to, to be there for you to push you through that it's worth it. It's worth going back for. I just wanted to add to that that I consider myself as the result of uh, adult education. Uh, I came to this country when I was 26 and coming from Mexico as an immigrant. And uh, so uh, I had to go through the whole uh, high school kind of program. Uh, Which was time. odd when you're 26, right? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really yeah. I'm, I'm 26 and I'm coming to this country. In my country, I was a professional, almost finished my uh, teaching credential there. But I come to this country, I had to mm, work as, uh, I mean, as a uh, farm worker, picking up uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, you know, planting onions and that. So but it was difficult. I mean, mentally, you are not prepared for that. But, but you know, ha as uh, Danny was indicating, having the courage to go through, uh, you know, uh, your own uh, fears, you know, uh, of um, trying to get that education you, you know you really need, it, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. So I usually uh, to my students, what I tell them is that, you know what, um, if you come to this country as an immigrant and you want to get an education, the least you can become is a teacher. Because I did it. So that, that <laughs> helps a lot. <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll put re links to all these resources on the Public Square website. I really appreciate you all coming and talking about this issue and sharing solutions as we go forward in our state. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.